What is up, YouTube? It's RS Mario here, bringing you another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. All right, so we have some interesting stuff to talk about today. So, um, Riddler Q is back at it again with some interesting riddles. Uh, we have Centro, who is hinting at a possible Pokemon anime video game crossover, uh, an, a, an event probably taking place either during or uh, in Indigo Disc or maybe even afterwards, because we all know that there's going to be some content that we're not going to get in Indigo Disc. I'm going to do a video about that one all by itself, because <laughs> that, boy, that, taught, that started an interesting conversation. Uh, we have Joe Merritt coming in. We don't talk about him too much on the channel with some sales figures and a whole lot more in this episode covering Pokemon Scarlet and Violet rumors while people continue to text me. <laughs> so, of course, you want to continue getting videos like this for me. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me. Follow me at twitter.com slash rsmario128. Like my video tweet, share my video tweet, and I will shout you out at this portion of the video, as well as check out my previous video. I did a Super Nintendo Switch video, and I think it might have got suppressed because the word shoot is in the title. <laughs> I believe that might be what happened. Check that out if you missed it or if YouTube didn't put it in your subscribe box. Um, well, let's get on into this. So, uh, starting off with Joe Merrick. He's the guy behind uh, Serebii.net, that OG Pokemon site that we all used to go to as kids to get our Pokemon information. Uh, he's, he, he dropped in the tweet saying, Here's the current chart for Pokemon main series game sales based on the most recent numbers given to us as of September 30th, 2023. Uh, so that uh, we see, you know, red, blue, and green is still at the top because of course they are. Uh, then we see Sword and Shield is number two, which that's kind of crazy. You know, Sword and Shield outsold Generation 2 which is kind of crazy, you know, gold and silver. And then Scarlet and Violet, right up there. Scarlet and Violet, right up there in the top four. And then Diamond and Pearl is uh, rounds out the top five. Then, of course, you have X and Y, uh, Sun and Moon, Ruby Sapphire, uh, Generation 5. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee, which I'm surprised that is that high. You know, BDSP, <laughs> which is uh, right up there. And, of course, you got Legends Arceus, which that seems, that seems kind of crazy that BDSP actually sold more than Legends Arceus and Pokemon Platinum, you know, B, uh, Black and White 2, Emerald, Crystal, all these ones that everybody talk about, the, the goaded, the goaded Pokemon games. BDSP outsold all of them. <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy uh, when you look at the quality of, of those games compared to each other. Um but yeah, just wanted to check that one out. Uh, to, to, to be honest, I think a lot of this has to do with uh, double sales. So, I mean, Platinum, Emerald, Crystal are one game. They're one games. They're single games. Whereas BDSP is two games. So, you know, almost double the sales. All right, so next thing we get into, we get into uh, Centro. Hello, YouTube. This is Editor Me. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that as I was editing this video, uh, you know what I'm saying, Centro came out and said that this was not confirmed. So it is a rumor. All right, take this with a grain of salt. It is a rumor. It is not confirmed. All right, there you go. So Centro just dropped this this morning, I believe. Uh, basically saying that Lapras confirmed for Indigo Disc, an event will take place on December for Lucius Lapras from the anime. So now we've already kind of known that Lapras was going to be in the DLC. He was actually in the, uh, it was actually in the trailer. So it was already confirmed that the Pokemon was going to be catchable in the DLC, but this is not just any Lapras. This is Lucius's, Lu 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 Lucius's, Lucius, mm. <laughs> this is Lucius's. That does not sound like it's right. This is that's his Lapras. All right, it belongs to him. That dude named Lucius. Okay, now Lucius is actually a character from the anime, the Pokemon Horizons anime. Uh, he is the motivation of Roy, one of the characters that's traveling with the main character trick. Uh, chick, her mo uh, his motivation is to find out what happened to Lucius. And this is going to be his particular 
Lampras. And more than likely, this is the content that they were talking about when they were saying that we're going to have like content after Indigo Disc. So not all the, not all the content is going to be available in Indigo Disc. The stuff that's available afterwards is probably going to be events like this. Uh, so the next one we have is this one. This is the last tweet that, uh, that Q dropped. Uh, and it says, its ability is to make its existence meaningful and to sell its cuteness while camping. So, this is interesting. So, the, the ability for Terrapagos. Now, we know that more than likely, Terrapagos is going to have more than one ability. Its ability is probably going to change when it gets to its, like, the, the big form with all the tails and the, the big shell and stuff. Um, but its little form has an ability that makes it seem really cute and it makes its existence meaningful. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> like, I, I mean, like, I guess give it a reason to exist. Maybe its ability ties into it becoming the big form. I'm thinking that's what it is. All right. So back to the anime again. So, uh, we have her fans. Are you ready? Uh, to watch her on the big screen or the big S. So basically, this is another direct hint that Pokemon movies are coming back. I mean, it would be crazy for them not to. I mean, because Pokemon movies even did fairly well in America, you know, and especially now with anime movies kind of doing good. Like you look at the My Hero Academia movies, you know what I'm saying? Anime movies do pretty good. The Dragon Ball Super movies uh, until Dragon Ball Super died. <laughs> <laughs> they do pretty good in America, so it would be crazy of them not to do Pokemon movies anymore. All right, so then we get into more of the meat and potatoes of this. So we see uh, Q says, okay, uh, forget the troll post. Finally time to guess the Pokehex feature. And he says, shininess conversion, gender fluid, IV adjustment, or moving balls. <laughs> uh, I don't think we could do that last one in a kid's game. Um, <laughs> I don't think we can do that last one in the kids game. Just being honest. Um, so, uh, I picked, I believe I picked, um, uh, IV adjustment. Cause that's more likely what we're going to get. Um, but the interesting thing is actually in the replies. So missing go master says IV adjustment would be interesting, but also, I mean, but it also render hyper training redundant. Uh, and it better damn well not let you turn anything shiny. My guess is it'll have to do with moving Pokemon into different balls, which I, I mean, yeah, but I don't even think the balls are important, but they're not that important, <laughs> you know, but Q says, even if it's adjustment related, they will make sure that limitation is everywhere. So basically it's not going to be like a full-blown Pokehex. It's going to be kind of like Pokehex. It's going to be kind of watered down, which is what I expected because, I mean, they still want you to play the game. You know what I'm saying? You know, they still want you to raise your Pokemon. They don't just want you to be able to just make Pokemon on the fly because to, to them, that's not playing the game properly. But not everybody really has the time to make a Pokemon team from scratch from like breeding to training to IVs to EVs to, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody has the time to do that, you know? Um, then there's another reply here where you see uh, Jan, who somebody replies pretty frequently on Q's post, uh, says, we need the rusty crown soon. And then he says, you, you're you more accurate in some extent. So, to some extent. So basically, uh, this right here, kind of got my ears perked up a little bit because rusty crown sounds like it's a reference to generation eight because you know we had the rusty sword and we had the rusty shield for the dog legendaries rusty crown could be for maybe a different legendary coming from generation eight maybe it's for cal rex because cal rex is supposed to be like the crown tundra pokemon you know maybe we'll have maybe it's referencing cal rex or something cal rex like is going to be in generation uh, nine because it's still we don't know what the new mythical is. Maybe the new mythical could be some sort of king Pokemon. You know what I'm saying? This one right here. So this one was actually pretty interesting. Uh, we have uh, Q says, wow, who's the artist? Do you think similar things will happen in Sudachi 2? 
So we all know Sudachi 2 is in the gold disc. <clears throat> and so we see uh, Greta, and it seems like, you know, she is either being comforted by her glamora or either she's being uh, hurt or tortured by it. You know, because we see this one in the bottom right hand where it looks like glamora might be hurting her, even though I think personally uh, the glamora is probably comforting her in whatever bad dream she's having. And we, we've seen like, you know, Ridley Q reference like dreams and imagination and all the other kind of stuff in other tweets. So maybe this could be something related. You know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe uh, Greta's imagination is relatively dark and Glamora, you know, comforts and helps her out with that, you know. Or it could be, you know, controlling her body or something, something to that extent. Something more, something more devious. So then we have a reply, and uh, Christian Ainsworth, which definitely does not sound like uh, a villain, <laughs> uh, Greta is probably a Glamora that wanted to become human and got its wish granted via Terra Energy and actually became the Greta we see. And then he says, then Q says, hi, playwright son. So, you know, like, okay, maybe he's on to something. You know, and a lot of people are thinking, me, myself included, that this is related to, uh, what's his name, to to uh, to Kieran. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Kieran is another Pokemon or was a Pokemon at some point, you know what I'm saying, that got a wish from Dokotado and that wish allowed him to become a person. You know what I'm saying? All right, now we get to the real meaty part of this video. So we have uh, um, Riddler Q and he dropped, do you agree on this book, especially the first part? And it says, Sapiens, a brief history of mankind. Now I'm not gonna go and read this book to try to figure out what Riddler Q is talking about. Um, but he says, just a question. If you could use fiction power to create a time machine and then use that time machine to summon paradoxes, how would you call this? You know, and I'm thinking like, you know, it's imagination power. You know what I'm saying? It's an imagination station is what I would probably call it. But all this kind of links up to what Q is talking about with that book. Now, Soul Silver Art, luckily, was able to decode this a little bit. Okay, Q helped me out, but I think that I cracked this. This is about his previous riddle he wanted us to battle on whether we think if the whole Area Zero plot will be about time travel, imagination becoming real, or is it just not going to be explained? This book is a brief history of mankind according to this author. Uh, at the beginning, he talks about one of the biggest moments in mankind's history, which he called the Cognitive Revolution which is basically the moment where cavemen began, became thinkers and dreamers and developed language and used their imagination to create folk tales, religions, etc. All right, and so that kind of works. I mean, because the, the imagination tweet kind of hints at this, you know what I'm saying? That, oh, you know, what if you had the power of imagination to create a time machine? You know, and then if you look up cognitive revolution, the cognitive revolution was a real thing that occurred between 70,000 and 30,000 years ago, it followed Homo sapiens, uh, it allowed Homo sapiens to communicate at a level never before seen in language as far as we know. Only Homo sapiens can talk about things we've never seen, touched, or smelled. Think like religions, myths, legends, and fantasies. And so, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has had a through line about this for a while i mean the paradoxes you know imagination power all that kind of stuff so more than likely that storyline is going to come to a head the, the time travel stuff and the imagination stuff is going to come to a head in this story probably involving terrapagos you know then we get one more tweet that's connected to this uh and that is again back to kieran you know what I'm saying? So, so he says, the involution king of Blueberry, uh, his sibling tells you to hide from him. Now, I don't know what the last part means. Uh, maybe more hints at, you know, evil, dark Kieran, you know what I'm saying? But involution is the key word here. All right, because involution 
at least uh, translates into Nijian in Chinese uh, as an English loan word of the Chinese word for involution. Nijian is made of two characters that mean inside and rolling, you know, or like introspection. If you can kind of parody it off into that, you know, introspection, something going on in the brain. So you put this with the, the cognitive revolution stuff and more than likely Kieran is going to be a key to a lot of the stuff that goes on with this imagination power plot that this plot line more than likely. Huh. All right. I told you we had a lot of stuff to get through. Um, tell me what you think down in the comments down below. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm overthinking this. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and as always, people, keep it real.